Welcome to Ask Dr. Vaughn. This particular day we're doing the subject of the Zika virus, which has been the hot thing in the news today. So I wanted to make sure to cover it since it's a medical topic and you guys trust me and my evaluation of the, the information that's out there. Spent most of my time reading on uh, the cdc.gov to get this information, a little bit on the World Health Organization website. And here's what I found out. I found out this is a virus very similar to yellow fever and dengue virus. Uh, and because it's so similar to them, you don't know which one you have when you get it. Thankfully, we have a vaccine against yellow virus if you go into a, a part of the world that uh, you have dengue virus or yellow virus. Uh, the Zika virus, not quite as serious. Generally, it causes a fever, rash, joint pain, red eyes, and, and that's about it unless you're pregnant because it can cause birth defects and that can be very serious. So that's why we actually do something to try to prevent it. What can you do to keep from getting Zika virus? Well, stay away from parts of the world that it's in which for now seems to be from Mexico to uh, southern Brazil, like all of Mexico, all the way to the northern part and Brazil all the way to the southern part. As far as it being in the United States, just three hours ago, I saw something on YouTube from CNN that said there's been a confirmed case in the United States, but when I checked back on the World Health Organization and on the CDC website, I could find nothing about there actually being a case in the United States, although it's perfectly reasonable that it could make it to the southern part of the United States and possibly even spread as we get uh, closer to summer. That would make sense. Now, how do you protect yourself against it? Well, stay covered, use a bug repellent, the ones that contain DEET are the most effective, although people are a little concerned about possible neurologic problems with it. For adults, I don't know that there's ever been a problem with DEET being used. Uh, on kids, you want to use it very sparingly, if at all. It's better just to keep them away from standing water, keep them in during the parts of the day that the mosquitoes are out, and get rid of the standing water in the first place so we don't have a problem with mosquitoes come the spring and summertime. Generally, mosquitoes are a problem during the evening hours uh, after the sun goes down and early morning, but this particular mosquito is very active during the day. It's an aggressive biter and it likes to bite humans. Uh, don't know why, but it just is. So there's also been a report of spread through sexual contact. That's just one report. And then there's also a report that says that maybe it was transmitted through a transfusion. This is very limited. A bit of a problem because we don't have a commercially available test for it. So even if you had it, you would not necessarily get tested for it, especially if you're in normal health and it's not much of a threat to people and, and normal health goes away within uh, days to a week. There is a test available through the CDC and so blood samples can be sent to track it and they're, they're doing that, of course. Uh, individuals are encouraged to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes if they have it. Uh, you don't want to spread it to other people because the mosquitoes bite you and then they'll bite somebody else. Now we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions to our friends on Periscope who are live watching us right now. So let me go over to our Periscope folks and Periscope, do you guys have any comments or questions on the Zika virus? If you do, go ahead and ask them now. You can put them up. So somebody asks, uh, Tofmo asks, if a male gets infected and has sex with a female, can't it be transmitted to the baby? Now, that can cause birth defects, but it's actually in question whether the virus itself is transmitted to the uh, fetus. To me, it makes sense that it is in order for it to have its effects, but we know that there are other things that can have effects on the baby without being transmitted. So the answer to the question is theoretically, yes, uh, by all the information we have. If we have any other questions, we'd be glad to answer those. Go ahead and uh, type them into Periscope. For those of you who aren't already on Periscope, if you think that's interesting, you look for at Dr. Vaughn when you get it. The question is, are any other patient populations at increased risk besides pregnant people? As far as we know, it's really just pregnant individuals that there's a problem. And it's not the, the pregnant individual themselves, it's their, their infant, the, the fetus that is at, at risk. I've not seen anything about it causing an increased rate of deaths in the elderly or immune compromised, although you would think it would because other viruses that are similar to that, uh, as far as mosquito-borne encephalitides that we have even here in the United States, I'm not seeing any evidence that that's a problem. One of them I think of is the, I want to say pigeon virus, but that's not the name of it. Uh, the one that uh, we associate with the birds in California. I'm sorry, I can't think of the name right off the top of my head. Somebody asks, if you contract the virus, are you guaranteed to have children with, <laughs> are you trying to have children with birth defects? No, there's no guarantee at all. Uh, but it has been associated with some birth defects. And with most things like this, the earlier in development that the infection occurs, the worse the effects. Of course, if it's happening right near the time of the birth, uh, the chances are there'll be absolutely no effect at all on the baby. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? While we're waiting for the questions, I'll let the people at home uh, on YouTube know that 
you certainly can be a part of Periscope by downloading the app for your uh, mobile device and then looking up at Dr. Vaughn, that's the at sign, Dr. Vaughn, and Vaughn is spelled V-A-U-G-H-A-N. And we also encourage everybody to sign up or subscribe to the Auburn Medical Group channel to not miss future reports on outbreaking medical topics and also some of our, uh, what we call Medicine Verite or Real Medicine where we show medical procedures. And sometimes they'll actually be live on the Periscope, other times they'll only show up on YouTube, you don't know which, so if you want to catch everything, you want to be on both of them. Another question comes from Tothmo, if you're infected, what can be done? The, the treatment is just simply rest and maintaining fluids and then keeping from getting uh, bitten by a mosquito so you don't spread it to other individuals. That's the entire treatment that we have right now for it because it's not causing serious injury to people. It's just the birth defects that are, at this point, seeming to be a problem. As more information comes out, we'll go ahead and let you know. Of course, you can always ask and comment on this video, and I will uh, reply to your comments. Until next time, this is Dr. Vaughn telling all of you to stay in good health.